Hey guys, it's Archon. Welcome to Inferno Friday. This week we got a new developer journal. Patch 1.0.8 could be just around the corner. BlizzCon tickets are about to go on sale. Info about Project Titan may have been leaked. And of course we'll have our weekly item giveaway. So to start things off, we have a new developer journal this week talking about multiplayer improvements coming in patch 1.0.8. And it seemed like the main focus here is they want to make it so it's more efficient to play in a group than playing solo. So if you have friends online, you don't feel like you're going to get more efficiency just playing by yourself. So they've added some bonuses and decreased some of the additional health and stuff like that. Now there are other things coming in 1.0.8. This is just one of them, but the developer journal only goes into depth about uh, the multiplayer improvements. And so they start things off here talking about multiplayer bonuses. So starting in 1.0.8, the plan is to give 10% bonus experience per player in the group for a maximum of 30% more experience in a four player game. So this is what they're going to be testing out on the PTR. Of course, numbers could change and this might not be what actually makes it into the game, but this is what they're announcing right now. And this bonus from experience will be multiplicative. So it'll multiply all of your bonus experience or all of your total experience by 30%, for example, in a four player game. Uh, instead of additive, we just, we'll just add 30% on. So to give the example here, if you have a total of 510 bonus experience on MP10, that would mean that each monster has given you a total of 610 experience because you have the original 100% that it gave you and then the bonus 510. Um, if you're playing a four player game in 1.0.8, it would multiply that six point, uh, I'm sorry, 610 by 1.3. So an extra 30% and you'll get 793% uh, experience. So it's a pretty big boost there, getting 30% more experience in a four-player game. And they're also making it so you get 10% more gold find and 10% more magic find. But it sounds like that's additive. It says uh, this bonus can exceed the 300% gold find and magic find caps. Um, so really big bonuses there for playing in groups in 1.0.8. It sounds a little too strong to me, but I guess we'll just have to test it out and see what it's like. Again, I'm sure if it is too strong in the PTR, they'll tone it down. Um, they're also adding matchmaking tags. So public groups have not been that successful um, in Diablo 3. Uh, it's, it's just hard to find people that are looking for the same thing you are, but they have matchmaking tags coming in 1.0.8. So when you join a public game or get in queue for one, you can let the other players know what you're looking for and find players that are also looking for that. And the three tags they have right now are questing, um, I'm sorry, questing, full act clear, and keywording. It's different than the picture that it shows on here. Oh, and PvP, uh, which would be brawling, but of course once PvP comes out, um, maybe that tag will, will apply to that as well. So you can choose what you're going to be doing. Um, they didn't put like running keep depths 2 over and over again or anything like that because I think it would just been a really long list of all the things that people might do in a game. Um, but at least you can get a little bit more specific and find people that are looking for the same thing as you. I think that's a good feature that they're adding there. Monster health. Currently, monsters gain an extra 70% health per player in the group. They're dropping that down to 50%. So again, even more bonuses for playing in a group. It sounds like it's going to be almost mandatory to play in a group, which I don't think is what they want. So um, again, I think PTR might scale back if, if people do feel that it's mandatory. I think they just want to encourage people to play in a group. Even if you're much better geared than your friends, they want it to be worth it to play in a group. And uh, I think that is a good change. And now this, especially for me and fellow wizards, is a really cool change. We've been hoping for this for a while. Archon kills. Kills in Archon form. Uh, currently, Archon form gains one extra second duration every time you get a kill in Archon. But in uh, 1.0.8, it's going to be extended by assists. So you don't even have to kill it. You just have to be around. So if your group's killing stuff and you're there and you're helping, then you'll get duration. Which means you can use Archon form in groups for the first time, uh, as long as your group is fast enough to keep up with you and kill fast enough. But uh, it makes it so that Archon's viable for groups, where before it was only viable for solo. It makes it so it's viable for multi-boxing too. I think my friend and fellow streamer, Anigo, is probably going to try multi-boxing some Archon Wizards, which would be uh, kind of fun to watch, I think. Uh, they're adding Identify All. You'll be able to go up to, it looks like this shrine. I'm guessing it's going to be in all the acts, and just identify your entire bag of loot. Uh, so mostly just a convenience and time-saving thing. They, the reason they put it in the multiplayer improvement section is because they feel like one of the problems with multiplayer is one person might fill up and have to go back to town, and they're out of the battle for a long time and will miss stuff. Well, this will get them out and come back in uh, a lot faster. Combat alerts, I thought this was really cool. Uh, they're making it so 
whenever someone in your group encounters an elite pack or a treasure goblin, there's an alert to everyone. And it shows it on the map as well, I believe. So that everyone will know uh, that there's an elite pack found and they can go to that person. Uh, it says there's a combat icon on the mini-map so other people in your group can locate enemies. On top of that, we're also going to put a com combat icon over the banner in town. So if you're in town identifying all your stuff, someone finds an elite pack, you can see which banner is in combat and just take that banner to get straight to the action. Or if you're like on hardcore or under geared, you could not take that banner and avoid getting killed really fast. So I think that's a really good addition. It'll make uh, groups a lot more easy and avoid having to type E while you're trying to not die from the pack and all that. Uh, players near you. Uh, this is pretty cool. Um, so I guess they have a feature similar to this in StarCraft 2, but it just finds people that are literally near, near you in real life. So they said it's uh, really good for like internet cafes or university dorms, but just being able to play with stuff, people that are actually near you in real life, it's probably kind of a cool idea. And you can see on this picture they also have like a status update you can put in there, like they have looking for MP8 key run group. And uh, you can see other people's status updates. Um, and then they also talk about private chat. You can start conversations with up to 99 people and it's just like your own channel where you guys can talk without having to be in a party. So all kinds of things are adding to facilitate uh, group play, which I think is really cool. I think this will help out a lot because sometimes if you're way over geared than your friends, you just don't want to play with your friends. Like you want to play with your friends, but you feel like you're losing efficiency. And this, I think, will help alleviate that. I just hope that it doesn't feel mandatory to play with friends. Um, I wouldn't mind, of course, but I think, I think for the game's sake, some people are going to want to play solo and they don't want to feel like they're getting penalized for it. Okay, so enough about the developer journal. Patch 1.0.8. It looks like it's coming out very soon. Uh, there was a few indicators that it might be coming out. There was a blue post uh, a few days ago saying they couldn't confirm whether it was going to come out in the next 24 hours or not. Uh, it doesn't really say anything, but it kind of implied that it was potentially coming out in the next 24 hours. Of course, that was a few days ago, so it didn't. But even more clearly, we got this known issues list. 1.0.8 known issues list. It looks like it was posted accidentally because it got removed almost immediately. Um, but the fact that they have a known issues list for 1.0.8 implies that the PTR could be very soon. They've also said that the PTR is coming very soon. So um, I would guess next Tuesday. I think PTRs usually open up on Tuesdays. Um, but also on this known issues list, there was something uh, quite interesting. Let me see. Here it is. The bind on equip affix can roll by itself on items. One of my viewers saw this. I thought that was really interesting. Uh, I've never seen a bind on equip affix. Now, of course, it is totally possible that they're talking about the bind on account uh, property on items like the BOA crafted plans. Um, but, but they said bind on equip and they said affix. And so that's interesting because we obviously don't have a bind on equip affix right now. They haven't mentioned adding any bind on equip gear, but this seems to imply that there's a chance that we might have it. Maybe I'm looking too far into it, uh, but it was kind of exciting to see, and I'm uh, interested to see if that yields anything. But 1.0.8 PTR should be coming soon. I'll definitely be playing it on the stream if you guys want to check that out and don't feel like uh, getting in there yourself. And uh, I should answer this question now because everyone's going to ask it anyways. Anything that happens on the PTR stays on the PTR, so nothing you earn you'll be able to keep. None of your progress will transfer over to the live game. It's just so you can test out the new content and help them balance it and make it better before it's actually released. Okay, BlizzCon tickets going on sale. They just announced April 24th and April 27th. They'll release batches of BlizzCon tickets. I'm going to BlizzCon this year. I'm going to do it. I don't know how hard it's going to be for me to get tickets, but I'm going to make sure I do. I've tried to go to BlizzCon pretty much every year, and something happens. Uh, something comes up, or I try to buy tickets and they sell out too soon, or friends cancel. This year, I've already decided I'm doing whatever it takes to get some BlizzCon tickets. If anyone from Blizzard's watching, help me out. I need some tickets. But uh, I'll be there, so if you guys are there, maybe we could meet up. Uh, we could have like dinner or something one night with uh, anyone from the channel. That'd be kind of cool. I haven't decided for sure. But yeah, if you're going to BlizzCon, hopefully I can see you there. I'm really excited about it. And April 24th or 27th, be ready, because tickets sell out like that. You have to have like a million windows open. and Well, I shouldn't share people's secrets, I guess. But just be ready to buy them if you really want to go like I do. Um, so there you go. And also, one last thing before our weekly item giveaway. The site Titan Focus, which is a site around the game, the project 
Titan that Blizzard's working on. If you haven't heard of Project Titan, it's it's just a game we know very little about uh, that they've been working on since, I think they announced that they were working on it in 2008, and uh, we're hoping to get some more information about it at BlizzCon. Um, but apparently there was some information leaked. Now, I don't know how valid any of this information is, if it's legit. It could be completely made up for all I know. I am not vouching for any of this information. I just thought it was an interesting article and that some of you guys would like to read it. So there's a link to it in the description below. Um, but they say some pretty cool things. Uh, according to the article, Project Titan is based on Earth's history. There's a lot of time travel. You're going back and forth. There's like Greek mythology added. It's like real Earth, but then a lot of mythology and stuff is worked into it. Um, it's an MMORPG, third person, tab targeting. Um, th this is just according to the article, of course. I don't know if any of this is true. For all I know, it's a racing game. Uh, we, we really haven't heard anything official on it yet. Um, but they said there's going to be clan housing. There's gonna be, uh, it's, it's designed with esports in mind. Um, the game will have an auction house, but they don't know about a real money auction house. Uh, it's really interesting stuff, uh, assuming it's true. It's very interesting. Um, either way, it's kind of fun to get an idea of what they could potentially be working on. Uh, I was surprised to hear that it might be an MMORPG, as I thought they would just keep World of Warcraft as their MMORPG and, and maybe uh, invest in, in a new type, a new genre or something like that. But according to the article, uh, that's what it is. Uh, they say it's it's not a StarCraft, Diablo, or WarCraft universe. We already knew that. They announced that it's not going to be in one of those three universes, uh, so that's not really new. But, um, yeah, check it out if you're, interesting, uh, if you're interested in that. Um, but, of course, we don't know how legit it is. Okay, so that's enough of updates. It's all the big stuff that happened this week. Uh, now we're going to do our weekly item giveaway. So last week's winner of the item giveaway was Goofy Spartan. Goofy Spartan wanted these Zunis boots with 8% poison damage, 161 int, 84 vite, and 47 all res. So you got them, Goofy Spartan. If you win an item on the channel, all you have to do is come on over to Twitch and let me know, either in chat or through a message. Uh, sometimes I can't read chat, so a message might work better. And then I'll have you confirm that it's you on YouTube and get you the item as soon as possible. So this week we have six items. I'm going to show you each of the items. If one of them is an upgrade for you or something you would like, you can leave a comment below. I'll randomly pick one comment and that person will get the item of their choice. So we have, most of these items are from previous weeks, but we have a few new ones. We have a Witching Hour with 71 all res. We have this Boulder Breaker with 1500 damage, 161 crit damage, and reduce the cost of Hammer the Ancients by three. We have a Dead Man's Legacy with 19% attack speed, uh, increased elemental arrow damage by 7%, and 6 max discipline. We have an Inner's Chest good for a Fire Res Monk with 185 dex and 95 vite, 41 fire res. Now, I got some complaints that the Boulder Breaker kind of sucks for barbs, and barbs need a good weapon here. So I added this Echoing Fury, uh, 1146 damage with a socket. It's a strength one, of course, with 0.24 attacks per second and a low fear chance. And then uh, a new weapon for Witch Doctors here. We have a Monojuma's Carving Knife with 947 damage, a socket, and uh, everything else is pretty standard. But a pretty good Monojuma's with a socket there. So again, leave a comment if you like one of those items. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you did. Stop by the live stream sometime, and I'll have another video for you soon.